Okay, in this video I want to talk about a couple of protein purification techniques. Um, these might be pretty common. You'll probably see them in the first couple of chapters of your uh, biochemistry text. So I thought I'd just go over two of the most common ones. It gives it give some reasons why you know they have some differences and why maybe you would use one of these um, techniques in one case and, and a different one in another case. So um, it's not really the type of thing where I can do a whole lot of problem solving, at least not right now. We will do some problem solving with this in a, in a in another video, but this is just an introduction and a little bit of discussion about it. So I have gel filtration and electrophoresis. And they both use the same gel matrix but have different orders of elution. So we want to kind of investigate why they have different orders of elution even though they both use the same gel. So an overview of the techniques and what makes them different. It says in gel filtration chromatography, large molecules are eluded from the column first with smaller molecules eluding last. So the thing to remember about gel filtration chromatography is that large molecules are going to elute first and the smaller molecules are going to elute last. So you might be asking, you know, at this point, why is that? So the reason for this is that the column is packed with gel beads and these beads have tiny pores in which small proteins can get caught up in, thus slowing the movement through the column. So essentially, this, this column is packed with this gel, and then you take a protein that's in solution, and you pour it through this column. And if the protein is large, it's going to, if the protein's small, it's going to get caught up in these small pores that are actually in, that are actually inside these gel beads. These gel beads have tiny pores, the protein gets caught up, it takes longer to get through the column, essentially. So the larger molecules can bypass the can bypass the gel, relative uh, can bypass the gel, relatively unhindered and move relatively unhindered through the column. So that's a that's another important fact is that the larger molecules actually just bypass the gel phase. They can actually just literally not go through the pores because they're too big to fit into the pores, and they just and they'll actually wind up coming out first. So in this technique, one should know the size of the protein they are trying to isolate so that they can figure out which elution samples would likely contain the desired protein. So what I'm saying there basically is you, you want to have a rough idea of the size of the proteins because you're probably going to take multiple samples, maybe three, maybe five, maybe ten of these uh, samples from the elution column. So you want to know, have an idea of what's going on, you want to have an idea of what the size is, so you can kind of, you know, narrow down which which of those samples you're going to investigate further to see, you know, if your protein's actually contained in there. So now I'll move on to just talking a little bit about gel electrophoresis. And this says that in gel electrophoresis, the small molecules will move further down the column and at a much faster rate. So this is essentially kind of the opposite of the gel chromatography that I just talked about. <clears throat> Excuse me. In this um, case, the gel, the, the the proteins are actually going to the smaller proteins are actually going to move much faster through the gel and end up further down on the column. In contrast, large molecules get caught up in the gel. So large molecules get caught up in the gel, and the small molecules. The so small molecules move further down the column and at a much faster rate. So those are the, those are kind of the important points in, in, in just thinking about it. And the larger molecules will be located near the top of the column, while the smaller while the smaller ones will be located more towards the bottom. So if you were looking at one of these um, gel samples, and you know you can see pictures of these on the internet. There's other videos out there too um, on YouTube where they actually do the laboratory technique. I'm talking more in terms of, you know, maybe something you'd have to explain on an exam. And you'll see that the uh, smaller proteins will be located more towards the bottom and the larger ones will be more towards the top. And the reason for this is that the large molecules just can't pass through the gel phase the way they did in gel, can't, can't bypass the gel phase the way they did in gel chromatography. And um, that, you know, that's, that's really the main issue. The entire, you know, um, gel electrophoresis technique involves a gel column in which there's no way to avoid it ha you know the protein has to move through the column so since it's forced to move through the column it's actually it's, it's just going to get caught up in the gel if it's larger it's just more surface area 
uh, you know more things to get caught up on so the next thing I want to talk about is the mass of the protein under investigation will be different for each technique so you know you might be asked to, to explain why the mass of the protein if I use gel chromatography may be different than if I use electrophoresis so even though both of these techniques are used to determine the mass of a protein by running a set of proteins for which the molecular weight is known and comparing the protein to these standards the mass is not always the same so let's just think about that for, for a quick second here because I think this is important in understanding what's actually going on here so I, I take say two proteins that I actually know the molecular weight of I put those into the solution along with the unknown protein and then what I wind up doing is I, I wind up running this through say you know gel electrophoresis and I want to see where my protein falls and what I'm hoping is that my protein is going to fall somewhere in between the two standards so I have these two um, proteins of known molecular weight and I'm running it with an unknown I want to see where the unknown falls in relation to the two uh, the two proteins that I actually know their molecular weight so that's what you're doing there but what they're saying here is that the mass is not always the same so why is that and this is due to the fact that electrophoresis is typically run with a denaturing agent and is only impacted by the absolute size of the molecule which correlates directly with mass so an important point here is that it's typically run with a denaturing agent so gel electrophoresis is typically run with a denaturing agent that denaturing agent basically unfolds the protein and makes it linear so that, that's what's going on with denaturing agents because you're not you're not degrading the protein so you're not completely destroying the protein you're just denaturing it you're making it linear and removing it you know removing that three-dimensional folded structure and then that uh, w correlates directly with the mass so the absolute size correlates directly with the mass um, in chromatography shape matters so now we're talking about you know gel chromatography and shape matters with elongated molecules appearing longer since the area of the sphere that would be needed to fully encapsulate encapsulate the protein is larger in long thin proteins than in short fat proteins so basically what they're saying is if you, if you get this protein and it's long and thin it, it's going to take a greater sphere to encapsulate it and that's going to mean that <clears throat> and that's going to mean that we're going to get different masses for those and uh, compared to a short say a short fat protein in this case and in addition chromatography is run under native conditions so what they mean by native conditions it, the proteins still fold in still fold it it's in, it still has a three-dimensional structure um, they haven't broken any of the uh, weak you know say hydrogen bonding interactions between subunits and such so in addition chromatography is run under native conditions leaving subunits not connected through peptide bonds interacting with each other the multi subunit protein will loot as one large protein while it will while it will be several smaller bands in electrophoresis so what what i'm saying there is that the subunits will be connected they're going to move through the column together and it's going to thus have a different mass than if we use electrophoresis which as i said before we're using a denaturing agent with electrophoresis and that's going to remove any of these subunits or, or separate the subunits and that's why you're going to get several smaller bands as opposed to say one band for the entire protein so I hope this helps a little bit just a brief introduction into um, what's going on with two of these popular techniques ones that you could quite possibly be asked to explain talk a little bit about so hopefully this little bit helps thanks